Hello, and welcome back to our video series on learning digital product release. The next three videos in this series cover the initial configuration or set of steps required for the product. The goal is to get you up and running so you can quickly achieve first value. The persona we'll showcase in these videos is that of the release administrator. This is the persona within an organization that manages the release process and will be defining and setting up releases within DPR. As a release admin, your main setup task is to create release templates for different types of releases. You do this by activating release policies and defining approval definitions. In this first video, we'll be covering release policies. We'll be reviewing what release policies are, how policies fit into the release process, how to access out-of-the-box out of policies from the DPR workspace, and how to duplicate, edit, and activate new policies. Let's get started. Before we jump into the product, let's quickly review what policies are. Release policies are data-driven validation checks that happen automatically, leveraging data from records within ServiceNow and third-party integrations. Think of policies as the gates that deem when a release is ready to progress from one phase to the next. Only once all policies tied to a particular phase are compliant can a product move on to the next phase. In Washington, we launched with the DPR policy content pack that includes several common out-of-the-box policies, and we're using our policy as code engine to define these policies. To tie this back to the adoption journey, policies are not completely necessary to start using DPR and don't come into play until maturity steps three and four. If you're not ready to automate using policies, you can skip this step and use manual approval in your release templates and come back to policies when you are ready. For now, let's assume we're ready and want to start off right away with policies. Okay, jumping into the product, I'm now logged into my ServiceNow instance as Andrew, our release administrator. Logging in as this role brings us to the DPR workspace, which is the home landing page for the release admin. At the top of this homepage, we can see a guided setup experience. This experience provides step-by-step -step instructions for each phase of the configuration process. In this demo, we're gonna start by activating our release policies. To start, click on Activate Policies from the Guided Setup Prompts. Here you'll see all of your out-of-the-box policies. Please note, we've already gone ahead and activated our out-of-the-box policies in this instance. When you first start, all policies will be in the inactive state. When a policy is inactive, it cannot be executed, even if that policy is mapped. Think of it as a maintenance mode. Therefore, to begin using policies, we first must activate them, which is what we've done here. Now let's make an update to one of our policies so it complies with our organization. Let's choose the integration test pass policy. To maintain integrity of out-of-the-box policies, users are unable to directly edit policies shipped with a DPR policy content pack. So instead, my first step is to create a copy of the desired policy. To do that, I click on the ellipsis and select duplicate. I then give my policy a name, select version 1.0, and click Duplicate. The new policy will be created, and I'm directed to the new policy page. Here I see policy name, category, and the description of what the policy tests for. In this case, it checks whether the percentage of pass integration tests is not less than the threshold value. Here's where I wanna make my change. The default value is 100, and we want to update this to 80. To do this, I have to go to the Policy Builder tab. When you create a policy, by default, a draft policy version is created. Each policy version contains version metadata, a policy script, and variable input definitions, which you can modify according to your requirements. You can see all those here in the Policy Builder. There's another video later in this series on creating new policies that covers this in more detail. For now, we're simply going to navigate to Config Parameters, select Min Test Patch Threshold, and update the default value to 80, and then click Save. Now that we've updated our policy version, we need to publish it to make it available for use. To do so, select Publish. In the Publish Draft dialog box, select Activate this policy to also activate the policy along with publishing the version. 
now return to the All Policies page. And you can see your updated policy listed here. You can repeat this process of duplicating, editing, and publishing policies as needed for any use cases you may have. We've gone ahead and done that in this instance. While we have shipped a few common policy definitions out of the box, we understand companies will need to create new policies from scratch to suit their specific needs. We will have a separate video later in this series that walks you through this process. Now that we've defined all our policies, we'll eventually map these to different phases in our release process. We do this using release templates, which we'll cover in our third video. To summarize what was covered in this video, we now understand what release policies are, how policies fit into the release process, how to access out-of-the-box policies from the DPR workspace, and how to duplicate, edit, and activate new policies. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or are looking for additional resources, please check out the DPR community page.